Good morning. I suppose it's what, maybe Thursday, maybe Friday. Uh, looks like half an inch of rain last night. It was, uh, you know, not wanted, not needed, but it is what it is. So we didn't get all the oats. We got to two small pieces and they're very small, like less than 10 acres each. So I expect with the weather we're gonna have today, it looks like we will get them because the oats are standing. The barley that's swathed, no, that we won't get that today. That's gonna be soaking wet because it rained that much. So this puddle was not here yesterday and now it's here. But uh, for right now, I'm gonna get at it and start the dryer. We got, uh, what do we got left here? We got a little bit in the wet bin, two grain trucks full. I think dad took some out of this. Ooh. If you took any, you didn't take very much. So we got uh, <clears throat> two loads in this truck, two more. Yeah, there's a lot of drying to do. It'll be oats all day. But uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and get the dryer fired up and then uh, go back in, have a quick coffee while it's drying. It doesn't take very long. Although this load was in the dryer overnight getting rained on, so it'll need an extra 10 minutes for sure. I just stuck my camera in there and I'm not sure if you can see the flame or not, but very basic, very simple. Now the new ones do have more modern technology for moisture, time, things like that. This one doesn't. So it needs a lot more uh, hands-on than the newer ones, but you know what? It, it does the job and uh, it is a little small for our farm. However, if you run it 20 hours a day or as long as you can, by the end of harvest, you've pretty much finished drying as well. So. It is not full of oats, and I'll show when it's empty. Uh, there, inside, there's another big screen cone, so the, the grain is only maybe, you know, whatever it is, 12, 15 inches deep going around the walls, going down the sides. And uh, that big fan is pushing hot air in there, and uh, the idea, right, you heat the grain up and then the moisture comes out through the screen, circulates around, and then you go ahead and unload it. This is inside the dryer. As you can see, in between this inside screen and the outside screen isn't a whole bunch of space. Uh, and that's how it works. So there's a big ring in there for the propane to be ignited. So that's flame actually up in, up in this hole. Big fan blows the heat into this inside screen. And then uh, the grain just slowly circulates down around it. Now, Kind of an okay system, I guess. Uh, only thing is, is you're limited to... Uh... Let me get out of here for a minute. The dryer itself is okay. This is a really old one. There's nothing automated about it. And there's very little, there's nothing digital about it either. So <clears throat> the control panel, you can adjust plenum temperature, grain temperature. Uh, these are just lights for 
warning lights, uh, some few gauges. These, this all does work, but there's nothing uh, nothing automatic about it. So, and for us, we find mostly when when you get into the drying years where you just you're just drying everything anyways, and you're drying and you're drying it like say barley, you're drying from 18, 19, 20 down to 13, 5 you're often pretty much guaranteed of a feed quality anyways so it doesn't the science behind drying at that point isn't that important so we just we don't worry about it we just turn the dryer on blast the heat to it get it dried get it cooled get it out get it in the bin get it safe for long-term storage okay well good afternoon i guess but i noticed when uh we were drying here this started to look a little floppy and this is melting because the cross is gone this is like look at that look how long we've been running this it's wrecked it's wrecked oh boy anyways this is like 400 degrees she's she's cooked so better see what we got Whew. all right so uh I was kind of hoping that I caught it early enough. I definitely didn't. So look at this. See, this is wrecked. This is damaged. This is all. This is wrecked. Uh, ouch. And it's hot. It's like 200 degrees. I, I knew that because I, I, I checked it because I was curious. So I got to bust this out of here anyways and see if I got another cross. Um, if it comes out without breaking, I, you know, foolishly, I'll probably, if I have a cross here, I'll probably just put a new cross in and then... Uh, and run it and then uh, when we order this in fact there might even be another another uh yoke here we do have some inventory of things there's some we will have to uh what the heck's back here no, that's not it I'll have to rummage through. There's some crosses here. Hopefully one is the right size. Maybe this one. I thought I had bought a spare. I don't know. You never know. Anyways, I'm going to see if I can get that one apart without wrecking everything. And then uh, <clears throat> see how it goes. Okay, so changing these things isn't that overly complicated. Uh, obviously, when they're wrecked, you don't have to use really any caution in taking them apart, except for you don't want to put any pressure on these yokes because you'll break these arms off, you'll crack it in here or whatever. But there's just snap rings in there, kind of a deal. That's what they look like. These ones are rusted in and it's super hot now, so I'm going to have to chip them out of there. And then you kind of just press it either way. So let's get at it. All right, so we uh, we don't try to accumulate too much of this old stuff. In fact, uh, the salvage guy was here quite a few trips this summer, taking lots of it away. Uh, this is some of the stuff that ended up staying, I guess, for now. Uh, and, and maybe it might be a good idea. So this forage harvester has a PTO shaft, and I think it will fit in place of that one that's wrecked because... Uh, it is, you know, of course it's 5 o'clock, right? So I think the, uh, I think the parts store the local one would have probably have that yoke or probably get you going but uh yeah i mean everything breaks down at 4:59, and then uh it screws you for the evening whereas if we have this and we can get it going again uh it won't be a you know we won't have to uh, we won't have to wait good evening so after jockeying around and getting this shaft out it, it, it was amazing rarely is that the case but it was the same size shaft fit right in there i don't have another uh guard and this one is melted because that other shaft got so that other yoke got so hot melted the plastic but i'll leave this on here because that's definitely safer and uh this is even a 1000 pto uh the other like the dryer has a 540 coming off of it but with this tractor because there's so much horsepower with this tractor we just run the tractor at 540 pto speed and that's enough to uh definitely enough power to run this dryer so Let's get her fired back up and uh, 
see if it works.